So we've had a long-standing interest in uh, how trees make or other plants make their woody cell walls. And like many people, we were interested to see if we could alter the properties of these woody cell walls in a way that would make them easier to use as an efficient feedstock to generate biofuels or uh, other kinds of novel materials. So the disease has been largely, if not totally, eliminated from commercial apple growing. But our, our interest remains because of the way that symptoms develop. It, it's like an, a mimic of the kinds of things that we would like to do to improve the properties of wood. So you can see some uh, typical symptoms here on these, this rather old tree on these new branches. Basically, as apples develop, they're unable to support their weight, and so you get this characteristic bowing downwards towards the ground. So although this disease has been uh, described for more than 80 years, there's still very little reliable information on what causes these really unusual symptoms. What you can see here is a cross section of apple wood from a symptomatic region of the stem. It's stained in a way that lignified cell walls should stain yellow. But you can see that most of the fibre cells actually stain a purpley brown colour, which is the staining of the cellulose that you can visualise in the absence of lignin. Okay, so we have extensive data from proteomics, expression analysis, and from metabolomics that pretty much all show the same thing, that the decrease in lignin is due to decrease flux through this first step in the lignin biosynthesis pathway caused by a downregulation of phenylalanine ammonia lyase activity. I guess the big question is, what is the mechanism that causes this downregulation of PAL? And I think this is where the story gets really interesting. So if a plant is attacked by virus and also in some cases by other kinds of pathogens, one of the things that it does in response is to synthesize a whole series of small RNAs. Now in most cases, these are designed to recognize the virus and help with downregulation and uh, destruction of the virus. So they're an integral part of the plant's defense response. However, there is a second response, which also seems to happen in um, response to viral infection, in which small RNAs are synthesized. But in this case, the small RNAs don't target the virus. They seem to target some of the plant's own genes. And so the plant is able to alter its, the profile of its transcripts. PAL seems to be one of those genes that is specifically targeted for downregulation by the plant. One of the unforeseen consequences of this work was the remarkable similarity between the mechanism that the plant uses to downregulate its uh, PAL gene in response to the viral infection and the kinds of experiments that people have been performing using genetic modification on trees. In this case, they also use an RNAi-based mechanism to downregulate or alter various steps in the lignin biosynthesis pathway in order to generate wood with improved properties for the production of biofuels or other biochemicals. Now, apple rubbery wood, as I've said, is largely eliminated from commercial orchards, but in the most extensive survey that I've seen, which was performed in the UK in the 1950s, anywhere between 5 and 50% of the trees in any particular orchard were infected with apple rubbery wood. Now, while these trees are obviously not being subject to the same kind of scrutiny that you would find in a formal field trial, certainly the fact though that thousands if not millions of these trees have been grown all over the globe over a period of several decades without any noticeable environmental or health defects certainly sh should provide some interesting context to the debate on the merits and safety of GM trees 